One of the things that's really important when you're working with a cross compilation environment and using a remote target is the ability to debug code right on the target. So in our case here, what we would like to do is to be able to take here and debug code that is running on a Raspberry Pi using our host environment that is actually cross compiling under Linux. What this means is that our Linux host, which is what you're seeing on the screen right now, will actually communicate via Ethernet with our Raspberry Pi. The code that is on the Raspberry Pi will be executing and we'll be able to send commands back and forth for debugging purposes. It's a little bit more complex than just simple debugging, but it makes it a lot easier to debug remote systems as we're trying to work through problems and do the normal software engineering and software development process. So let's see how we go about doing this. To begin with, there's a couple things we need to set up. First off, if we think about it, our Raspberry Pi that I've got here is running a different architecture than my virtual machine is. So I need to make sure that my virtual machine is capable of having debug sessions or communicating using debug sessions with a different architecture. Normally this is not something that is installed by default. So we need to actually install a package onto this virtual machine. So to do that, I'm going to do sudo apt get install gdb hyphen multi arc. So sudo obviously gives us super user control app git install installs a package and we want the gdb multi arc package so this will go through here set it up on the local machine and install it and now i will have the ability on my linux host that i'm working with to actually debug different architectures so that takes care of the host we also need to do something to our Raspberry Pi in order that it can actually be communicated with for debugging purposes. So to make this work, I'm going to start up a session with my Raspberry Pi. Like so. And log on. So now I'm actually on the Raspberry Pi. And what I'm going to do is sudo apt get install gdb server. Oops, and it is just gdb server without the hyphen in it. What this will do is place on the Raspberry Pi a server that I can then communicate with from my host for debugging. So the Raspberry Pi now has the server set up on it. This is something you need to do once with your Pi. My host that I'm going to use for development purposes, my Linux host, has the multi-architecture GDB code in place, which will allow it to talk to the server to run the code. Now we need to set up things in Eclipse so that we can actually do this. So this is a piece of code that I'm going to run and debug. And what I need to do is set up a debugging environment for this. So first off, I want to check my project settings here. So I'm going to right click here on properties and go down to oops, the settings for the builder, like so. And I want to look here at optimization. Typically when we are doing debugging, we want to make sure our optimization level is set to zero. That's going to give us the most efficient way of debugging so it's not going to try to change the code the code will match in execution as close as is absolutely possible to what we've written if we start turning optimization on things may start changing in execution order and it becomes a lot more difficult to do debugging so we're going to make sure that that is set to uh, level zero shouldn't be any big deal now what i want to do is i want to go to my debug configurations down here so debug configurations, what this is going to do is bring up a menu here. And what I'm going to do is I want to click on this item here that says C, C++ remote application. It's remote in that we are going to be executing actually on the Raspberry Pi. 
C, C++ being the language that we'd like to execute. So what I'm going to do then is create a new configuration, new launch configuration. And what I'm going to do is, by default, this is being called Lab 3 Debug. The project is Lab 3 Part 3, which happens to be the name of the project that I have here. And I then want to go through and set some things up for how it's going to behave. First off, I need to create a connection. So I'm going to create a new connection using SSH. So we are going to SSH from this virtual machine is in front of you over to my Raspberry Pi for development purposes. So SSH and what's going to be named here basically is the host. So in my particular case here, this is going to be WS Real Time Pi 3, like so. The user is going to be Pi. And we're going to go with password based authentication. It's the easiest setup for right now. Okay, so I've set those up. This will take just a moment to get things going here. And when this comes back here, what I can do is set up where is this code going to run on the remote machine. So if I click on Browse and put the password in for my Raspberry Pi, What will end up happening here, momentarily, is we will connect to the Raspberry Pi. And it should be opening. Oh, I see what I did in my jostling around. <clears throat> I unplugged the cable. Let's try that one again. So we are here. And... this guy back up. So what we see is the path, so home slash pi, and in this particular case what I want to do is lab one part three. What this is is the actual path and name of the executable that's going to run on the Raspberry Pi. So in this case name is lab one part three slash home slash pi is the path that it's going to run on. Okay so that is all set there going to click apply and then there is one more thing I need to set up here with this which is I need to go over to the debugger and I want to change this so instead of this being just GDB it is GDB hyphen multi arc like so that will now enable GDB to use the multi architectured version of the GDB tools that are installed on my Linux host. So the debugger, GDB multi-arc, is going to talk to the Raspberry Pi GDB server, causing the code to run on the Raspberry Pi. All right, so I've got this all set up. And, oh, the application, lab one, part three, like so. So now I should be able to build this. Build all. Go to debug configurations here. Select this guy here. And. Oh, oh, I know what it probably doesn't like. Program does not exist. Hmm, what did I forget how to do here? This is what's called on the fly. So let's do a project clean here. Project build all like so. And now if I do the debug, whoops, debug configurations. There's the binary. Ah, I forgot to put the debug part in the front because this is the debug build right now. That's why it didn't like me. Okay, so I've got this. You can debug. What's being done is we are connecting. We've started up the program. And right now what we can see is the code is actually running on my Raspberry Pi. 
and I can now do things like single step through it. So single stepping here, F6 is going to step over, so I'm going to step over this, and you'll see down here the commands, main is executing, all these different things are being printed out to the console down here, which is actually meaning the code is running on the Raspberry Pi, and those things are being sent back across. So we have all this. I can set a breakpoint here, for example. If I set a breakpoint right here, whoops, double click, then what I can do is do a resume, F8, and we'll run down to that line. I can step over that. We got our host name. You can see over here we have host name, characters 1024, and we see W S R E A L, like so. Print out the host name, W S Real Time Pi, like so. And then the program exits away and eventually will finish. If I just click on resume, we can see the child exited. And at that point, everything will revert back to normal. So what you have seen with this video is how to set up your environment to do cross compilation, how to basically, or not necessarily how to set up for cross compilation, but how to do debugging of a cross environment using Eclipse. Basically, the gist of what it involves is setting up the multi-architectured version of GDB to run on your Linux host, setting up the GDB server to run on your Raspberry Pi in this case, and then setting up your project so that it talks to your Raspberry Pi and uses the settings appropriately to do the debugging. That's going to bring this tutorial video to a conclusion.